First, thank you very much, Paul, and all of the responsible people at Dark War House for giving us this very, very lovely room. It is spectacular. And we don't have houses like this in New York, so it's <laughs> nice, nice to see it. So thank you, Paul. I, I want to begin this evening just by telling all of you that Kati and I are Oh, no, no, we are, we have been dear. Friend, dear friends for many, many, many years. We have um, had a lot of adventures, a lot of fun, some sadness, and we've also had a lot of books. <laughs> because I think this is the 11th or the 12th? Uh, it, it feels like that, but it's <laughs> actually only the 10th. Oh, there. Okay. Um, and so this is the book that I read in the galleys on my way to South Africa one time. And I got on a plane and started it and because it was a really long trip. I got through the whole book. And one of the first things I did was get that when I landed was email, text or email Patty and tell her how wonderful it is. And it is a wonderful book because it is about an extraordinary woman. Extraordinary because she, not only because she was chancellor, second longest serving chancellor in German history, but she also rose to that position with, as Kathy says, three strikes against her. She was from East Berlin, she was a scientist, and she was a woman. And I know Kathy will delve into some of the details, how she got from where she started to where she was, her sort of um, fierce but quiet determination and her perseverance in a really, really first rate mind. Um, and she was chancellor throughout a period, not just the longest time, but a very, very difficult period for Germany and Europe. She had to leave her country and the European Union through the um, Eurozone crisis and through Brexit. And then she had to leave the Western world when the American president was trying to sabotage the entity which had provided security for the urban United States for so long, and not only sabotage Nathan, but also sabotage the fundamental principles of political democracy for which Germany and the United States have worked so hard. Writing this book, I know, was a big challenge for Kati. All of her friends knew that when she started out, because it was a book about a foreign leader, a European, in a different language. And also, it was about a, it was a biography about a person who was famously private. Um, but needless to say, Kati, in an intrepid way, was undaunted. <laughs> she um, she had been a reporter for BBC News in Germany, lived in Berlin, knew the country well, and still goes there a lot. So she um, had a lot of contacts, a lot of people to talk to. But there's no um, underestimating how difficult it was to put this book together. The critics loved it. If any of you have read the reviews, it has done extraordinarily well, it has been um, uh, praised by people who know Angela well and people who think that she you know, you know yep. transatlantic history well. I think that Kati got it and got so much of this right. So I am going to turn it over to Kati now to give us some insights to this spectacular woman. Thanks. So, <laughs> well, Maureen, that's the best introduction my book has ever had. No, I <laughs> no, so. really, I feel like I should interview you about the meaning of this book. <laughs> Uh, no, Maureen, uh, it's it's just such a, it's the first time you and I have done such a forum um, in, in, in such a, well, it's not formal, but normally we, we, we meet over lunch or, or dinner and, and discuss all the, all the global issues, but in a, with, with fewer people, put it that way. It's, it's such an honor for me to be with you. Uh, I feel, I feel uh, very much um, at home with this group somehow. Um, it, it's, uh, it, it's a group with, with which I, I have so many intersections and threads. And I've, I've met uh, several, several people who knew uh, Richard um, and even had the sometimes dubious pleasure of serving under him uh, because he was a challenging. Not dubious. <laughs> yeah, Maureen, I served under him. Yes, Maureen, Maureen <laughs> foremost among them. Um, but, uh, and also several of my compatriots, uh, they're, they're, I've, I've had 
bits of Hungarian conversation since I arrived. So this is this is truly uh, an international group, and I'm I'm uh, so grateful to be to, to have been asked to to speak to you. And I don't want to give a big speech of, um, about about this uh, book, but uh, but to open it up and hear your questions. But let me um, start off, Maureen's. Maureen, oh, let me start off by saying, could you please turn off your phone? <laughs> <laughs> That's usually my phone that goes off. Um, so, um, yeah, Maureen, Maureen is quite right that, uh, that, that this is by far the most challenging work that I've ever undertaken. And had I known um, what I was up against, I'm not sure I would have uh, I, I would have gone for it because yes, I knew she was private, but I didn't know the extent to which she was private and and how little interest she had in a book such as the one that I was interested in writing, which is really not strictly a political book. It's a character study. It's a uh, frankly, I don't think we we in this room, Forgive me uh, if you're German and deeply involved with the Bundestag, but I don't think that we are that passionate about German politics in, in, uh, in, in our country. What, what uh, the, the triumph of, of contemporary German politics is that it's so boring because, because uh, their history is anything but boring. Having started two world wars and, uh, and the Holocaust, <laughs> Uh, boredom was something to aspire toward, and we, 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 the United States, being the midwife of the of the German uh, Federal Republic and its constitution, uh, wanted to make sure that never again would a chancellor uh, be able to hold so much power uh, that it would that that uh, that it would become a, 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 a well what Russia has become and what very sadly for me as a Hungarian, uh, Hungary has become under, under Viktor Orban. Um, so Germany is, is now the model democracy and, and Merkel um, is, uh, was for, for 16 years, the model Democrat with a small D. That is to say that she was the, the, the upholder of, of the um, Western democratic values at a time when, when they were really under siege from, uh, from, from uh, populism that was, that was rising um, everywhere you turned. She, she was this, this, this brilliant woman who really understands macho men because uh, she was she was always the only woman in the room, be it when she was a scientist, she was a, a, a physicist, and she was uh, always the the only the only one at every conference, the only one in every lab that was a, a woman, um, and had ample opportunity to to uh, to study um, the the male ego. Um, that really served her well because she was she was not exactly blessed with her fellow uh, heads of state. So she had at the table with her while she was um, chancellor, um, you know, notably uh, Putin, her 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 longest, um, I describe it as a dysfunctional marriage. And will Maureen and Maureen and I want to talk about her relationship to Putin because I know we're all interested in that right now. And, and it, um, I do spend quite a bit of uh, time in the, in the or space in the book on, on that crucial relationship. Uh, but she also had uh, Donald Trump for four years. And, and uh, th there, was, there was no one who was more different from Trump uh, than, than Merkel. I mean, they were literally polar opposites in, in every way. And she prepared harder for that, for her first encounter with Trump than for any other meeting. She, and, and this will impress you uh, about how she prepares um, because that's, that's one of her superpowers is that she is always better prepared than the person um, um, across the table from her. She watched an entire season of The Apprentice. <laughs> 
<laughs> now, is there anybody in this room who would make that, one that sacrifice? <laughs> I mean, is there anybody? No. Maybe this gentleman who is who is watching his iPhone is watching The Apprentice. <laughs> Are you are you screening The Apprentice there? <laughs> Good. Um, well, Merkel did, uh, and she and 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 Merkel also read every interview he'd ever given, including all his his Playboy interviews. So, but nothing could prepare nothing could prepare her for for the reality of of Trump and her her. She has many Republican friends and mentors, notably Henry Kissinger, who was. Um, who, who was one of the early uh, uh, American uh, uh, statesman figures who, who understood that this was a woman with a big career ahead of her when she was just starting out. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, because uh, he called on her when, when she was the, um, the youngest uh, uh, minister in, in Helmut Kohl's cabinet. She was she was a minister for women and youth, two subjects she had no interest in. <laughs> but she was willing to bide her time and 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 observe and learn and was underestimated every step of the way by the powerful men who surrounded her. Um, and this turned out to be another great advantage for her. So so listen up. People, anybody here who has who has um, ambitions for for a powerful position of any sort, it's amazing how much you can get done if you let others take credit for it. She she did that the the, the whole way. She she has um, she's as centered as an oak tree. She does not need your or my. Uh, stroking or admiration uh, to to uh, feel affirmed the way most politicians need that daily plunge into into the adoring public. We know a lot of politicians like that. She does not need any of that. She needs because she is um, not only a woman of the East, as Maureen said, she was um, 35 when she first crossed from east to west. I mean, she. I, I uh, was also also spent my early childhood in in uh, in a Soviet satellite in, in Hungary, but I was a little kid when when we escaped. She was thirty five, so a fully formed uh, person who who had never breathed freedom, and uh, and she crossed the the, uh, the the famous night when the wall came down. Uh, she she followed a, a a big crowd that was surging um, toward the west when the aha Maureen me yeah <laughs> uh, so is it important do you want to take no. it? <laughs> it is important if it's one of your children then it's no, not children. allowed uh, yes calls from kids allowed um, so she she um, she she. She was a fully formed and a fully formed product of the same Soviet system as, as, as Vladimir Putin. So I, I'm gonna spend a few minutes on that relationship and then we can go back to the other influence. Um, the, there are two, two pillars to her formation. One is, is the, the, um, the Soviet uh, indoctrination and and living behind uh, a wall for for uh, she was seven when the wall was built um, and and therefore um, she she learned early and again usefully how to keep her own counsel how how to uh, be uh, how not to call attention to herself because in a totalitarian state. To stand out, to be the best at anything, was to run uh, the risk of uh, of being. It was it was a dangerous thing to be to be um, to be noticed. So but she just did to, win that Russian prize. She did well. I mean, she couldn't help but be brilliant. I mean, she is brilliant. <laughs> she has a photographic memory. Um, uh, I, I've never encountered uh, anyone who retained 
uh, facts, figures, charts the way the way she really? does. And and partly it's it's that she was trained as a scientist. Mm -hmm. So she, unlike most politicians, she's absolutely comfortable dealing with with numbers mm -hmm. and. Um, um, but um, so so she and Putin uh, were raised in the same same school of thought, Marxist Leninism, but came away with with uh, diametrically opposed uh, conclusions about that formation. So for her, the, the 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 opening of the wall meant her liberation. Uh, for Putin, it was the catastrophic event of the 20th century. That's a quote from him. Um, because he was a, he was a trained uh, KGB agent in Germany, um, not far from, uh, from where uh, Merkel was in her, in her um, East Berlin lab. He was the um, KGB agent in, in uh, Dresden. And um, for him, when the wall came down, um, he he was left uh, bereft and and humiliated. With Putin, everything is personal, and he took it as a personal blow that uh, that the Soviet Empire disappeared under him, and uh, basically vowed that he would spend the rest of his life and career trying to restore the the grandeur that was. And we are now all paying. For that, um, and 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 we can talk about um, Ukraine and and why why Ukraine is so important uh, for for Putin uh, and how Merkel for um, for the sixteen years that she was chancellor she kept Putin under control. Uh, she did that by meeting him. As a as a peer and as someone who literally spoke his language because her Russian is fluent, um, she was forced to learn Russian. And, How's and his German? His German. You know, one of the uh, one of the uh, last questions I was able to ask her because she does not give interviews to the likes of of me or or any other biographer. Not even her authorized biographer who's given up the job, really, yes. uh, because she simply she she's not interested in, in biographies being written about her. Um, but uh, so, but I did, but I did ask her, uh, Chancellor, uh, these days, uh, do you speak German or Russian with with Putin? And she said, now his German is better than my Russian. So we start out uh, speaking Russian. And, and then we generally switch to German and his German is very good. Uh, it was a relationship that really served the world extraordinarily well, the, their, their understanding of each other. Um, yeah, interrupt me because no, I'm I can not, go on. I'll yeah, you can't yes. actually. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm gonna drill down on this a little bit because yeah. um, you phrase this as um, miracle kept Putin under wraps yes. because the relationship was so tough. But um, there are others who say that she created or helped to create, because she didn't do it single-handedly. It started in 1997, originally Nord Stream. And that became the Achilles heel mm -hmm. in Europe in terms of depending, um, on, depending. Depend, depending on German natural gas through Nord Stream became something that Putin himself thought the Germans needed so badly they wouldn't fight back so i mean yeah did she make a mistake there did she or, well yeah so so let me just say that this is not a hagiography i i do not uh, uh shy away from dealing with her blind spots and and people in the obama administration said that every time obama asked her angela what about nord stream why 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 don't you cut that off she would give a different answer. Well, Barack, it's it's the business interest. Well, it's the car interest. It's it's um, Germany cannot cannot uh, afford to um, uh, uh, limit its and uh, limit its its um, gas and oil supply. And uh, basically, I think it was a mistake. But you have to understand 
that Merkel, who is a student of history, among other things, a student of German, Germany's darkest history, doesn't have a profound trust in her own countrymen in times of hardship, economic and financial um, stress. And so she never wanted to test that. Mm -hmm. And I think that was a restraining uh, mm -hmm. force in, in, in not wanting to, um, to, uh, to kind of gamble with, with, with imposing uh, economic and, hard, and financial But hardship. didn't she also think that if there was this closer interdependency, they yeah. needed to sell the oil, the natural gas, yeah. Germany needed the natural gas, that would, that would create a bond which actually would prevent them from doing it. Yeah, it, it, you know, the world, she's only been gone for two months, but we're living in a different world now. Mm. Um, and Putin is a different, is a, is a, is a different man than the one that, that, the one that, that uh, she, during the first Ukrainian aggression in 2014, she talked to him 38 times in, in, uh, in two weeks because Obama handed off, Obama handed off um, the, um, basically the Western, Western alliance to, to Merkel because Obama couldn't stand Putin and said, that man just lies to me. Uh, I, can't, I can't deal with it. Well, he lied to her too. But uh, she didn't have the luxury of uh, of walking away from that relationship. So she uh, she froze that uh, that conflict in in uh, 2015 with the Minsk Accords, which which um, stopped his 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 aggression um, and and kept it there until no coincidence until she left mm -hmm. um, because. He underestimated the uh, the ability of, of the the Western alliance, which he thought was really on a decline, uh, to stand up to 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 withstand uh, his aggression without Merkel there to call him out. Merkel would have been in Moscow without any question. Uh, confronting him in the early days when he was moving his, his troops mm -hmm. um, to the, to the uh, Ukrainian frontier. And the rest of the world seemed to be in denial about that because he was, he was as usual, lying. That's what he does for a living. Yeah, but U.S. She, intelligence was saying all along what he's saying. Yes, you, yes. And I think, I think he was uh, outplayed actually for once by by uh, by our team yeah because i think i think the biden administration i think biden very shrewdly um, beat him at his own game by by releasing intelligence that uh, that normally we keep very close uh, to the vest so i th i think i think that that we've handled it very well but i think merkel would have been, would have done what no other head of state has done and and which is which is to be in his face she would not have been seated at the end of this comically long table because that is not their relationship she would have she would have approached him armed with all the facts and and uh, aerial photographs and and uh, maps and so on she once said that she knew every tree in the Donbass that was that was that was how granular her knowledge was during the the um, first Ukrainian so I assume she hasn't said anything publicly since it started that would not be her way. Yeah, I didn't think so. You know, yeah. she is trying to give her successor, Olaf Scholz, maximum running room. This is how democracies are meant to work. You know, thank you very much for your service now, Lee. Um, it's ironic that it is now the Germans who are giving us lessons in how democracy should work. Um, but, at, but at any rate, um, she, she um, does talk to her successor. I think that it would be a smart move to send her to Moscow, frankly. 
Um, but I, I, I don't know that that will happen um, because he, I think he would be obliged to deal with her. Okay, so can, can, I, can I go yeah. back in this? Yes, yes, yes. A bit because um, you mentioned that the two pillars of her life were um, the East Block, the East Block. Block. And 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 the, and the second one I I haven't gotten to, but it's equally important. Oh, and that's the Lutheran. Okay, that's where I was going. Yeah, actually. Yes, because yes. I found that part of the book fascinating. That she was raised by a Lutheran pastor who was very very important to yes. her life yes. and yes. definition of her life and how to live. So can you? And I'm, I'm, will you indulge me in a minute? Yeah. How do you trace that upbringing? And she lived in a in a yes in a facility which dealt with um, disabled children. Right. So she grew up with a pastor yes. who was living in a home that that housed mm. children with um, uh, various disabilities. Various disabilities. Uh, Down syndrome. Down syndrome. Yes. Down syndrome. yes. Um, so that and um, so presumably for all of her life, we don't mm. see any reason to believe otherwise. She had this foundational base. Yes. In the Lutheran doctrines and our traditions, and in and how do you trace that that upbringing yeah. to the fall of 2015 when she got brought in to Germany? Absolutely, uh, yeah, that's such a good point. Thank you. Um, so uh, yes, she she admired her very austere Lutheran Lutheran father who who never fully approved of her, never voted for his daughter, which I find astonishing. Neither of her parents he was, he was did, a socialist. because they were, yeah, they were socialists. Yes. And, and she chose the, the um, Christian Democrat, the CDU, um, which by the way, she transformed the, the CDU ain't what it used to be uh, mm -hmm. after 16 years of, of Merkel. The, uh, the, the CDU is now more like the SPD. The, yeah. So, yeah. Because she's she's opened it up and she's she's made it um, a much more uh, centrist liberal party. But at any rate, um, so the the Lutheran uh, faith, uh, which like with all things dealing that she, uh, regarding Merkel, is deeply private for her. She does not like to talk about her faith, but it's but it's absolutely consequential in in uh, in how she how she governed. And Maureen is so correct in saying Maureen who has spent a, a lifetime working with refugees, um, that that was, uh, came, that came to the fore, that influence in 2015, uh, when, when Europe faced this, this humanitarian uh, crisis from, from uh, the migration from the wars that Germany did not have anything to do with starting, we mostly did. Um, so, uh, so Iraq, Afghanistan, Syria, Syria, above all Syria, came flooding Europe, and and um, her fellow uh, members of the EU were busy un unspooling barbed wire and building walls. Um, Merkel said, "Wir schaffen das. We can handle this." A typical flat Merkelian assertion. Uh, she was once asked by the by the head, head of the WTO, uh, uh, "Can't you be?" Can't you put a little more poetry into your rhetoric? And she, she flatly said, "I am not a poet." Well, that's an understatement. She's not a poet. Uh, and but when she said, "Wir schaffen das," which for non-German speakers means we can handle this, um, she she meant it, and she, and Germany did handle it. And the fact is that one million Middle Eastern. Uh, uh, refugees, uh, not Christians, have found a home and a second chance in Germany, which I think has has made Germany the former Third Reich, the moral center of of the world. Uh, sadly, no one's competing for that place, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> we we certainly haven't been in recent years. Um, but it but it was it. It was it was a, a puzzlement to those who were not familiar with her Lutheran faith and with the fact that that um, she believes that it's part of the, her responsibility to to reach out to those less fortunate. And actually, I start the book 
you know, a, a very fortunate moment for me as a biographer. I, I was uh, present in a um, small chapel outside uh, Berlin in, in Potsdam, uh, where uh, Merkel for once um, let down her guard. And partly because it was a scene out of her childhood and, and the, the, it was a, a parish like the one she grew up in where, where um, handicapped um, children were very much a part of the, of the, of the community. And, and they, were, they were serving canapes and drinks and she was chatting to them. And I had a chance to observe how completely at ease and unself-conscious she is in the presence of, uh, of, of those people and, uh, and how it was, it was just a remarkable window of what she's, of the, the chancellor that unfortunately she doesn't allow the, the world to see on most occasions um, because, because she, she likes to draw a very sharp line between her private life and her public life. And I think it's rather unfortunate because she's really much more interesting than, than we think. She's also very funny. Yeah. Uh, I, 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 loved, I loved collecting anecdotes. Well, I was going to say, because you always hear that she was very funny. What yeah. to say about Hillary Clinton? People who knew her, that she was yes. very funny. So do you have any anecdotes you can share with us? Oh, uh, yeah. Well, once uh, she was standing next to Nicholas Sarkozy, uh, and, and she said, you know, Nicholas, standing next to you, I feel like an energy saving lab. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was very funny. Um, but, but she has a very dry, uh, very, very dry, sometimes cutting wit. She does an amazing imitation of Putin for her, <laughs> for her staff. You know, Putin uh, going berserk when, when he's not getting his way. And uh, she, I mean, how... How great it would be if she, if, if all of us could see that, but uh, but it's it's not going to happen. Um, and she's she also is a much warmer person than uh, than than most people think. I, I've seen her twice tear up. Uh, once was at a uh, at a memorial um, for uh, at Verdun um, World War One memorial. Um, and I don't know how many of you have been to that battlefield. Uh, um, it's it's a pretty unforgettable site where you know green rolling hills as far as the eye can see with 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 white uh, uh, gravestones. Uh, I mean, just a, a, an endless landscape. And 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 um, uh, as as part of this anniversary celebration of, of uh, a memorial to World War One, um, uh, kids from all over Europe. Uh, just sprung up seemingly from nowhere with brandishing uh, kites. And, and it was, you know, the, the fact that their great, great, great grandparents had perished for fighting for an inch of territory there and here with these kids and her eyes filled. And then, of course, she teared up with the little girl, with the, little girl yeah. um, the summer of 2015. Like, oh, geez, that's me. <laughs> 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 I know. Turn it up. Yeah. I think it's my, I think it's my the two of us have both broken the rule. I feel so bad. <laughs> it was my son. Was it? But I didn't. Oh. <laughs> yeah. That's how important you guys are. <laughs> um, so, so Maury, uh, so I have one, uh, um, one other question. I can tell you the yeah. only time in the book that I felt troubled by a decision of hers yeah well north stream you, well no you know. north stream that was political well this is mm -hmm. political too you know her great mentor was helmet cole yes yes ah uh, mm -hmm. and and yes. and when he was found you can probably explain this better yeah he was accused of corruption and taking no, taking, taking kickbacks kick exactly. and then refusing to disclose, disclose them, uh, yeah. the donors and you know it's one of these things which was a little bit murky was he really dishonest did he just forget he didn't, mm -hmm. didn't remember or, or whatever but she really oh sorry oh sorry i was talking about helmet cole related to helmet cole and helmet cole was her mentor and he had been chancellor and he was found he was accused of having taken kickbacks um, for his um 
presidential or no, it wasn't even for campaign. He yeah. didn't kick back anyway. Yeah. And it was a little bit murky. You know, he didn't just, it wasn't illegal, but he didn't disclose it. And why didn't he disclose it? Was he hiding it or was he forget or was it an unintentional mistake or whatever? But anyway, she she didn't stand by him. In fact, she was on the that. Contrary. On the contrary, she wrote an op-ed piece in Frankfurt, 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 yeah. saying that he should go. And I must say that I was troubled by that. Mm -hmm. I was also troubled by, you know, but I'm not, I'm not a Lutheran, but I just, you know, the foundational notion of Christianity of, you know, loyalty and, yes. and caring and, and I just, I just thought she, I thought, you I, thought she was too tough. I thought she was way too tough. And I just, I just couldn't imagine that so, she would disown him and that she would do it so publicly. So uh, she is tough. And in fact, Maureen, when the situation calls for it, she's ruthless. And I, I, I sometimes in writing this book, I felt like I was writing uh, volume two of Machiavelli's The Prince <laughs> called The Princess because she really is a very canny politician. She has has um, shattered so many uh, so so many uh, stereotypes of what women in power are are like. And one of those stereotypes is that that they're emotional and sentimental. She is completely unsentimental when it comes to. <laughs> Well, uh, to, what, what, to about loyal, loyal, what about loyal? What about compassion? What about caring? Okay. What about all those okay. other values? I, uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> yes. What about loyalty, compassion, and, and forgiveness, and all those other? Things? There's there's room for that, but not when you not when you are trying to. Um, well, first of all, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not when you're trying to run a country, and but not she was when running a country. she was she she. By by uh, ending the the coal era, she cleared a way for herself to become chancellor. Which shortly thereafter, she assumed um, the the head of the party, and from there straight to the chancellery. I think that that it was the right move. He, uh, I mean, Cole never forgave her, of course, mm -hmm. but. Um, no one else in the CDU, all those men, um, had the courage to tell him that it was time to go. He had overstayed. And she said at that point that, that she would never overstay. And she is the only German chancellor ever to leave at her own chosen speed. She could have run again, but she is such a staunch believer that that you serve your your time and then you leave um and i think that's another there's so many lessons in in her story and in this book about how to be a um a, a, a decent and um a, an honorable person but at the same time to keep your focus not on your career not on yourself but that was on her career if she got him out of the way she had a clearer path to chancellor yes but she wasn't yes but she would say and i i agree with her um that um larger issues were at stake than helmut cole's um ego or or his his he he he, he was That's no longer right. chancellor i would never yeah. do that to you <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but I, I will always give you a list of, of my donors. <laughs> Just ask. <laughs> I have zero political ambition. But um, no, but but yeah, the, the, the one of one of the uh, common sayings around Berlin is that the, the, the cemetery behind the Bundestag is littered with her corpses mm -hmm. because Helmut Kohl was the most famous, but but wow. many others. So she is, yes, she's tough, she's but she, she's, she's yeah. tough, but she had to be tough. Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah. a, a woman in that male world, I, I, yeah. Uh, and, and she put, she, I'm not going to convince I'm not, you. Yeah, you're not going to convince okay. me more on the cool side. And maybe a more sense of emotional. emotional I think you are. Yeah. And you're Irish. I am. <laughs> I don't know. So I look She's up. German. <laughs> I Angela is German. For better or for worse, I'm Irish. 100%. Yes. But in any event, um, I'd love to turn it over for a few questions because I know 
Yeah. Kat, Kat and I could go on all day, but I'll give <laughs> some of you a chance to talk. Are there any questions from the audience? Oh, oh no. good. Okay. Great. Can I, go ahead. I would like to know what I'm just so disturbed that Putin finds out the weakness of her and she's afraid of dogs. Oh, I mean, yes. The biggest dog that it has in the room. Yes. What kind of person is that? In, I think <laughs> in, in our country, yeah. we would find all of these things don't bring your dog. Because he was told he was told not to not to unleash his dog because she had twice been bitten. And that's precisely why he unleashed his dog. And when you ask what kind of a person he is, now do we, we know. not do we not know by now what kind of a person he is? He is the embodiment of evil. He is a once in a generation evil. I you know, I I uh, I have to say that I endorse President. Biden's uh, call for uh, for him to leave leave leave. The, leave the stage. This man is this man is is uh, is is really really uh, a bad guy. Overstayed his time. Yes. Yes. yes, but he's not leaving. Do you no. think that he and Trump made a deal of some kind? They didn't need to make a deal. They were, they completely, they, they were, they were, uh, well, I mean, I think Putin completely outplayed, uh, outplayed Trump. We were, we were not well represented in those meetings. We, we Americans um, were not represented in the meetings between, between Trump and, and, uh, and Putin. Putin was laughing all the way. There was another question. Yes, sir. Thank you. Um, Thanks. Uh, Charles Sills, America Eurasian Business Coalition. Uh, with regard to Nord Stream 2 yeah. and Germany and Europe's dependence on Russian oil and gas, uh, and I should know this, but I don't, what role did um, Angela Merkel play with regard to Germany closing down its entire nuclear civilian plant fleet, which made it so much more and suddenly dependent on the Russians. Yes, great question. So um, Merkel played the key role in closing down um, German nuclear power after the explosion at Fukushima. Uh, she, who is a scientist, understood that um, that there's no such thing as an absolutely safe nuclear uh, nuclear power. That if, as rare as those accidents are. Uh, Chernobyl and Fukushima, notably, um, when they when they occur, when they erupt, they are massive, and ultimately, it's it's the taxpayers who who uh, who pay for for um, to 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 correct the uh, that situation. And she also, again, this is Merkel, the 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 canny politician. She saw an opening there. She's a cautious uh, politician, but when she sees an opening. She goes for it. And here it was the rise of the Green Party. She was up for election and and she she wiped the, the Greens off the map by by making uh, this policy move to to um, to close down, eventually close down all nuclear power. And uh, so it was a political calculation. She is, <laughs> you know, she may look like a mild uh, uh, grandmother. But 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 she's very tough. She's very strategic, and uh, and she she um, illustrated that with uh, with with shutting down um, nuclear power. And and Germany now is is of course moving rapidly toward finding alternate sources uh, of fuel, and and we can we can thank Putin for for that. Um, but um, should have happened. Should have happened um, under under her. And and the other thing that that she that she um, uh, can be faulted for is uh, because she despises war. Um, she never she never gave a single speech about the, the about the need for Germany to to um, beef up its defense capacity, which badly needs beefing up and is now. Uh, is now getting that. Um, 
So that is a blind spot of hers. She thinks that war is a failure of, of statesmanship, that once, once armies march, um, the, you lose control and, and the unintended consequences uh, of war are, are, um, are, are myriad. And, and so she, she, did, she did everything to um, avoid, uh, avoid war and avoid dealing actually with, with the need for, she, the, for her, the notion of a militarized Germany okay. is, it, 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 it was fighting to her, it was fighting to a lot of Germans. Uh, yes, I, 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 yeah. They, 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 they had made their commitment to, to recognize their faults of the past by never putting themselves in a position where they could do what they had done before. Exactly. You know, that's the kind of thing that Donald Trump didn't understand. He thought they were just being sort of miserly for not doing 2% of their GDP on military spending, but it was really about, you know, as you said before, she did not really trust Germans, given the fact that they had done, they had, I mean, there's something I think beauty about whether they actually started because the Germans militarized first. In uh, World War One. Oh, you want to go back to yeah, World yeah. War One? <laughs> <laughs> they really did militarize, but anyway, the yeah. Germans were ready yeah. to go as okay. soon as they started. They did do, but anyway, they were they played a major role in some of the in the damage that were done by World War One, and it was right. persistent and fighting longer than they had to. Having said that, um, we had some other questions. Yeah, I was about to ask. I see a hand down there. Oh, a lot of hands now. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, so, why do you have for what? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> but we can, we can, um, I have a question. I yeah. was uh, the Deputy Assistant Secretary for EUR during the beginning of WikiLeaks. Oh, and then I yes. <laughs> that job. Uh, and I was curious how it really changed Merkel's opinion of the U.S., um, both yeah. on the psychological and emotional aspect. Yeah. And just separately, I'm curious what her views were on Schroeder, since I showed a, a position of Gazprom and you talked about coal. So two different questions. Uh, yeah, great questions. Uh, so um, she that was the low point between uh, Obama and, and Merkel. She, she, it, it took her quite a while to warm up to Obama because she was suspicious of, of this charismatic, uh, um, very young, very much young man in a hurry in her view. Um, it, um, she, she really didn't fully uh, respect him until, until Obamacare was passed, because until then she thought he was mostly flash. And, and she's suspicious of people who give, who, who give great speeches, <laughs> not among her strengths. But, um, but with WikiLeaks, uh, because it, it, that to her felt very personal, because, because the Obama administration was tapping her cell phone and, and that to her was very hearkened to very Stasi behavior. Um, so it was um, in the words of, of John Emerson who was ambassador uh, uh, during this period, it was a wasted year between Berlin and, uh, and Washington, uh, which, which it could ill afford. Um, Obama, Obama went from being, from being a hero to Germans to being second place to, uh, to Snowden. <laughs> who who, who uh, released the WikiLeaks and who's, who then became a, a, a German hero for that and um, and and on Schroeder um, she and Schroeder were oil and vinegar um, she she uh, uh, she was she was deterred I mean there's a there's a lot there's a lot in 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 the book about uh, about that and and her um, their mutual contempt. Um, and um, but the again the remarkable thing is that that once she was she uh, she outplayed him and outsmarted him the way she does a lot of strutting uh, macho men that is to say she let him implode uh, during a, a, a debate where he um, he just kind of lost it and and Merkel one of her power moves is uh, is to just lean back. And 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 let bloviating men do themselves <laughs> in. <laughs> so she doesn't actually torch them, but she doesn't run for the fire hose either. She just kind of leans back and, and lets it happen. And so so it was with Schroeder. And the fact that that he 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 now is buddies with Putin and is and is on the Gazprom 
uh, bored. It's a it's a it's a disgrace. It's an embarrassment. Um, Germans don't it's like Trump to talk about that. Um, so I've got so many questions over there. I see a young lady in the back, and then I'll come to you, sir. Okay. <laughs> I don't think of myself as a young lady anymore. But <laughs> believe me, you are. <laughs> well, I, mean, what, I, I think you are. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so Katya and I were talking during the reception about how there should be a resurrection of Sino-Soviet studies. <laughs> I'm the president of Radio Free Asia, and uh, and so my my question is, you know, sort of just as uh, with. Russian oil and gas to Germany. Um, China, during the reign of, of Angela Merkel, has become uh, Germany's first trading partner. Yes. Um, what is her view now towards China, and, and how does she yeah. look to navigate the, the Yeah, thank you for asking that. And, and I, I do have a master's degree in Sino-Soviet studies, which used to seem like such an arcane uh, subject from the from the Middle Ages, but now again we have Sino-Soviet uh, studies <laughs> or issues at least. Yeah, so she uh, she started uh, focusing on China in two thousand five, so way before um, you know, way before our uh, pivot to Asia. Because again, it goes to her, her um, fascination and knowledge of history. She knew, she knows that, that China had once been a preeminent uh, center for culture and learning and, and way ahead when, when Europe was a, a bunch of muddy villages, the Chinese uh, were, were uh, geographers and, and invented the gunpowder and so on. Uh, so she made it, uh, a point to to visit uh, um, Beijing every year, and usually came back with a packet of of, uh, of trade deals. Um, but she also, behind closed doors, she would never do this in front of the press. Behind closed doors, she would hammer whoever uh, the the leader of the day was um, about uh, about human rights and the need to um, and, and 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 the need to let Hong Kong be Hong Kong as as it had promised to be, and in the last uh, couple of years about the Uyghurs. Yeah. Um, but um, she she thinks that China deserves to be at the table with the with the big powers, uh, absolutely legitimate. Um, and and that and that we can learn things from China. She she is um, she's very impressed uh, by by the fact that that millions of people have been lifted from poverty by the Chinese, um, which is which uh, which no uh, other communist country has done for its population. Certainly, the East German communists didn't do for their population. But she's very distressed that she, Xi Jinping, has become a, a, now a, a strong man, one of one of the uh, one of the many strong men um, that have emerged. And of course, um, she she um, is is of course uh, deeply deeply troubled by by the Putin she um, uh, uh, coupling. Um, and and uh, but but she's such a realist. She's not an idealist. I I would I would uh, I would say that that she is she's not in the uh, Kissingerian mode of real politics. But she she believes in it's a kind of a determined optimism. Uh, for her, the image of Sisyphus rolling that <laughs> rock up the mountain, only to have it fall back down is not a negative image. She often cites that as, as how she approaches uh, politics and leadership, that you just have to keep trying, even if it's for an inch of territory. So it's, it's, um, it, 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 it's, it's, a, it's a more nuanced um, approach than, than you know, the, the, the hard-nosed uh, politics of of uh, of a of a Kissinger, right. because because there is at her core there there is um, this 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 deep Lutheran value system, mm -hmm. which I don't think that 
Kissinger has, for example. <laughs> Sorry, you had to paraphrase a couple yeah. times. I think Lord, you so I want to make sure you have a chance to answer question. Thank you for your insights. You haven't mentioned the European Union. Uh, Merkel played a very important role in her 16 years of leadership in bringing the union together. I think you might address one issue, yes. and that is during the pandemic, it was quite possible that perhaps Greece, Italy, and even Spain would have dropped out if it were not for Merkel and her leadership in creating an economic recovery. I think that's an important point to make. Absolutely. Thank you so much for bringing that up. You know, there's a whole lot we, we haven't mentioned, which is in the book, by the way. But but thank you for on, on the EU. That is she's often blamed for not having a vision. She has a vision and it's Europe. It's a Europe that's based on shared values as well as open borders and and uh, and, and, and free trade. Uh, she was devastated by Brexit. She just thought that was insane. Um, she, she she just couldn't understand uh, why why Cameron, her friend David Cameron, called uh, for that referendum, a, a totally unnecessary uh, move in her in, by her lights. Uh, she was determined that there would be no other defections from the European Union, which is why she coddled um, Viktor Orban, for example, because she didn't want Hungary. To, uh, to be the next to leave because then you know she felt that Hungary would go right to, to Putin because Orban and Putin are, are quite uh, charmed by each other. Um, um, and, and she fought like hell to keep Greece um, in the EU during, during the uh, financial crisis of 2008, the greatest financial crisis in 75 years, which she also managed uh, adroitly but uh, I fault her for, um, for, for bad, uh, bad optics, bad, yeah. bad, bad PR, her, or the lack, the lack of sympathy, compassion, yes. understanding, all of that. You know. Yes, yes, yes. Um, but she, she, but does, she, she does have her limitations, which but, I think you address in the book. I really don't think you can gloss over yes. them, but, but you know, she absolutely, I, I guess she's because, human. But yeah, she's yeah. human. I guess it's because she is so good. When you see those bad spots, they bother you because you want her to be perfect. And she can't, and she, she's not, and she can't, and nobody can be expected. But she, has, you know, I would like to ask um, for some more hands. <laughs> Are way there in the back? Two ways. In view of her knowledge of Putin, she probably is the Western leader with the greatest knowledge of Putin. And in view of her hatred of war, do you foresee an opportunity where someone may ask her to use her good offices in the Ukrainian situation? I, I uh, sincerely hope so, uh, because I think at the moment she's a wasted resource because she really knows how to get through to him. And I think she is the only states person whom he respects and knows he cannot uh, pull the wool over her eyes, um, and uh, I would. I, I think. I think she should come out of retirement and, and on behalf of humanity, and uh, and travel to Moscow, and uh, and he would not. I swear he wouldn't seat her at the at the end of that table where where Macron was seated. <laughs> Macron and all of them. And all, all of them. I know. Yeah. 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 Um, so I see the lady with the red jacket. Yes. Um, yes. yes. You, and and in, in the way, way in the back. Yes. Go ahead. Diana Watkins. Um, Hi, Diana. Okay. What would it take for her to start pushing the stone up the hill? And who in our government would have her here and be able to work with her? So you mean you mean um, more than just a mission to Moscow? No, you, with Putin. Uh, yeah, mission, mission. Yeah, mission to Moscow. Well, um, I, I think a, I think a call from uh, from Biden would do it, um, or or from her her protege Ursula von der Leyen. Um, you know, it's it's, uh, it, it's it's kind of out of the box thinking, but I think it's precisely what we need to be doing because. Uh, because nothing else uh, is working and no one else seems to be able to get through to this man who is so isolated 
and they literally speak each other's languages. And, and, and I, I, I think, um, I, I actually just wrote a piece uh, advocating this. So hopefully. what is she waiting for? What is she waiting for? Nobody has asked her. Nobody has asked her. She can't just pack her bags and show up at the Kremlin. She she needs she needs she the needs authority, she needs the authority in the back of the, the European Union and the United States. They have to call her. They have to tell her what they yeah, want her to do. But let's let's there. start a, a, a oh, movement oh, here. Right. <laughs> um, so we have two time for a few more questions. Oh yes, yeah, just a quick question yeah. more about the book. I'm really excited to go home and start the book. Um, oh, thank but you. How did you select her as your topic? And then in drafting and in starting this process, what were some surprising things along the way? Oh my gosh, yes. So um, I thought it was, uh, it's, it's, a, it's uh, the first book I've ever written about a woman, uh, hopefully not the last, because I really enjoyed the process, uh, as challenging as it was. Um, I thought it was amazing that, uh, that there wasn't one. Um, and, and is there a German I, language biography? There are a bunch of them, but they are dry and sawdust. That's that's Merkel's <laughs> own description of them, um, because she doesn't uh, she doesn't open up, and and because there's no attempt, they're they're by Germans who um, who who really uh, haven't. What the, you, you'll see the way I approach the, the story is because she's so shut down. First of all, I translated every interview she's ever given going back. And then I retraced her, her, her personal journey. So I interviewed teachers, uh, I, inter I interviewed classmates, I interviewed, um, you know, a guy who danced with her <laughs> at the <laughs> University of Leipzig, who asked her to dance with an ulterior motive, and the motive was he needed help uh, prepping for his exam. <laughs> <laughs> she was quite uh, shocked <laughs> that, that he wasn't asking her to dance just <laughs> without a motive, without it. But so it's, it's a, um, it, it, it's as human uh, uh, an approach as, uh, as, uh, it, it, let's, let's put it this way, it's a more, it's a more human approach to the subject than than the uh German Bush, than the German mm -hmm. ones and it and I and I have to say if you'll forgive the little boast it's been translated into 18 languages so um so there's a real interest in her around there the is that's there because she is such a figure of mystery yeah, yeah. part I mean I think that's all that success and knowing so little about her makes her you know woman mystery yes. you want to know and intriguing yeah. 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 I can honestly say that I said this already Kathy gave me the galleys and I was on my way to South Africa. Yes, I did. In the middle of I thought it yes, was. Yes, yes. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I love I love hearing it. <laughs> oh but yeah, they I may not. It. No, it, so I I mean I strongly recommend the book if you're looking for honestly a good read. The number of people that have come up to me to say, who well, you know they got the and our friends and she thinks, I just finished that book. It's amazing. Really? Oh yeah. yeah. To uh, Tony Martin, <laughs> Iris Sherman. Okay, we'll okay. we'll talk about this. No, it's, it's really really true. <laughs> yes, it's, uh, and you know, also, all right. So the question Paul. over there, Paul. Uh, thank you. Um, given everything you've just said, I'm wondering, do you think Putin is busily reading the book right now? <laughs> Preparing. In case she does show up. He could do worse, but uh, unfortunately, I don't give him that much that much credit. Um, I. I, I think he's so dug in now, and and um, you know it's 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 like we're we're in a a different era now, mm -hmm. and how quickly everything uh, changed. Yeah. Our our smug belief that we were on a smooth path uh, has been has been shattered. Uh, for our friend in the front row, yes. well, and then I think this is probably our last question because I think we're already over time. But I want you to have a chance. <laughs> Yeah, I thank you for for addressing um, the Nord Stream, um, but I was wondering if your description of her and her uh, her her the, the Sisyphusian yes. meme. Um, I, I'm wondering if that had something to to do with it because I'm I'm not satisfied with she made a mistake. The question is why and mm -hmm. how. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. do you think that it was a miscalculation yes. with Putin because she thought maybe that was one way? You know, she still to get through. 
you know, she weighs everything very carefully. One of her favorite sayings is the advantages outweigh the disadvantages. So she she deals with with uh, consequences. She she works out the cons list. Yes, um, the 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 unique. Uh, 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 Contrary example to that is is the refugees where where she did not weigh the um, and and we haven't we haven't mentioned um, the fact that the far right um, party the Alternative for Deutschland is also a child of the Merkel era mm -hmm. and and now sits in the in the Bundestag but it's stuck at low yes. fifteen percent yes 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 it is it is but it's it's, it's there it's, it's there. a direct yeah. result of her refugee policy and but I don't think that she has any regrets about that policy because that that really came from a very deep place and subsequent events will probably absolutely actually the, the, the degree to which the Germans have been able to integrate yes is, yes is well, you we look at, yeah we, we look at what has happened six years later you know I, I just want to go on but anyway because I think we're passed out but the, the way those refugees have been treated in terms of the support system the language learning the cultural instruction yeah. and the communities that that lived in and had welcomed them it's extraordinary and she yeah. did that and it was good for germany exactly exactly and transformed germany into into it you know when 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 in conclusion i can say that her her uh, her, her her transformative uh, legacy is that germany um is is now a um a multi-ethnic open tolerant um uh, uh, society uh, where not only women have been have been uh, brought to the to uh, to the to the highest uh, levels of leadership, Merkel notably, but uh, but many others too, because she opened up. But but gay marriage is now the law of the land, and uh, and it's a, and 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 the fact that um, that uh, it's not even a topic any longer. The refugees, they have been integrated. Yeah. So there is now, should we choose to, to um, uh, copy them, there is now a template for how to deal with, with uh, the current um, humanitarian uh, crisis, which, which is upon us. I, 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 don't want to, oh, I don't want to overstate our welcome because um, Paul, you and, and, and oh, Gore have yes, been really yes. generous to give us this time and this beautiful room. Mm -hmm. and if, uh, you know, I just one thing I forgot to say in, in my um, remarks is that we are co-hosting this, the Women's Foreign Policy Group is co-hosting this with the car. And what you may or may not know about the Foreign Policy Group is it is an organization which um, is composed of um, uh, professionals in the field of international relations. And the idea is to bring women in foreign policy, whether it's in the government or NGOs or other organizations, to bring them together to mentor them and to support them and to advance their careers in foreign policy. And um, they all, WMG also has a mentoring program for young women and middle-aged professionals, again, to help them um, move further in their careers in international relations. So I wanted to, I wanted to give that a little plug, and I want to thank the court again, Paul. Yes, thank, thank you all. And thank you, Patrick.